how much longer is this gig gonna go? That's a good question, man. <laughs> That's a sound effect right there. <sighs> Welcome punters, and those from farther away. Today, we have a new show that's normally on Brian's channel, but today I'm gonna flip, reverse it, and he's coming on to Paul the Punter. And we're gonna do the series that I love of the Who Is series. So normally Brian meets up with other YouTubers, and goes and has a chat with them, and just kind of finds out who they are, and I love it. I love hearing about all the new people. So I'm gonna, <laughs> this new person over here, <laughs> uh, Brian, we're gonna delve into something a little bit deeper, I think. Now in these interviews, there's always questions like, how did you get started on YouTube? Or why do you like math? We're gonna forget all that. We're gonna go big. And we're gonna, it's gonna be a bit serious. And do you know how it's gonna be serious? Black and white. Yeah, man. Okay. We change it up. Okay. Go monochrome. Okay. So, we're gonna go big. Are you ready? Let's do it. When did money stop being a problem? Money's never not a problem. That's like, it's never going to not be a problem. It's like, I don't see myself ever, ever. It doesn't matter how much money you have or how much money you earn. It's always going to be a problem. Always. There's no, like, maybe if I had like five when, million dollars in the bank, I would actually feel okay. Five million in the bank yes. saved. Yes. But when is like, you know, everyone has a point where you're like, mm, it's, it's kind of, I, I can almost not be concerned by it. It's not like I don't wake up in the morning and go, oh God, how am I gonna pay my money? I, I know what you mean, I know what you mean, but no, I, I, it's still always a concern. It's always a thing on my mind. It's, I, in my previous jobs, I saved almost more than half of my income. Almost really? all, always. That's that always net, been net. my thing. Yeah, like net. After not, taxes. Not, yeah, exactly, okay. after taxes and everything. Yeah. So I've always been that way. So I'm always very conservative and stuff, but yeah, it's just not, I've, I've said on the channel a couple of times, until you see me driving the Corvette Z06, like <laughs> there's, I, I'm still just like, oh, okay, this, this, that, yeah. But is, is that because you have like this drive for success rather than a kind of, a, you can be not complacent, but just content? It, it's not even a drive for success. It's a drive for comfort. It's a drive for, okay, okay. And it's, I didn't grow up poor or anything, but it, it's always hard work and having money. There's never enough. There's never enough. And mm -hmm. it just, oh, what if this happened? What if that happened? Oh, somebody's house burnt down. And yeah, they just had to pay the mortgage. Like, well, oh, something happened. He broke his leg. Yeah, it was $20,000 to fix his leg. Mm -hmm. So there's never, there's never enough. It, it just will never end. And that's why <laughs> I'm just gonna keep working. Uh, which, which video went big? that you never, you were like, there's no way this is huh. going to be popular. Man, that's a tough question because I really like all my videos. So it's very random what gets big, mm. except for, you know, the hip jump is sketchy. It was kind of blood and guts. It was shocking. Yeah. I knew that had potential. That was going to be something. I've since like put that video unlisted because I just hate it. It's, really? Yeah, so it's oh, like okay. millions of views. It was, was sucking say. up so many of my views on my channel and just, it's it's one of those things where I, I liken it to we're sitting in here and then someone walks by and it's like, hey, what the hell's going on in here? Like, it's like, ah, get, get out of here. Freaking, mm -hmm. you're not welcome. Like, I don't, I've probably got nobody joining the channel because of that video. It's oh. just shocking all. No one, it's just, you can see if you, someone subscribed. Yeah, maybe they know. did, maybe they didn't. I, I just, it's still a part of, if that happened again, I would do the video the same. Mm. It's a documentary. If shit happens on the trail, shit happens on the trail and I'm gonna show it and that's all a part of it. But the, uh, you know, it's a YouTube game of like, oh, oh, oh kind of mm. thing. There's this classic YouTube video of the, some guy getting knocked out and the thumbnail is like him, like, it's like an older guy kind of like oh, mm. knocked out and YouTube tried to suggest that fucking video to me <laughs> so many times, like, no, hide, no, hide. I don't want to watch yeah. it, I don't want it. And this freaking thing just keeps coming back, keeps coming back and it's like, I'm sure my video is that to like a million people and it's like, mm. ugh. You just don't want to. Kind of like all those Twitch streamer compilations. You're like, no, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, that's good one. But it's like, it's random, isn't it? Like, it, I've not it's quite so, random. It, exactly. You know, there's people, we, we joke about if there's wood in the thumbnail. Oh, like, yeah. Like, it's like, oh, the Fort Shh, William. Yeah. Like, oh, God. Yeah, that's the secret. That's the big secret. <laughs> but yeah, it's, 
you kind of know that stuff's good and then when it actually is good and when YouTube's like, hey, okay, we'll throw it out there to more yeah. people and you are you live and die by YouTube thinking your video's good yeah. enough. Didn't you tell me the other month that like one of your videos from a Spain trip had just randomly yeah. been like... So, okay, that's actually not a bad point because all the Spain trip stuff from 2016, I really love all those videos, but there was one random one where the thumbnails kind of, you can tell it's kind of, maybe it's in Ainsa where it's just like, you know, thumbnails are so small and you only have this much to work with. And if something mm. captures the imagination, it's like, whoa, what is that? You know, and people click on it, but it's kind of a grayish thing. So would you, I mean, would you describe yourself, this is a short one, would you describe yeah. yourself as an introvert? I'm kind of weird half and half, I think. Half because half. I like being out, like being with people, like hanging out. Yeah, I love my alone time as well. Yeah. Like it's very much an interesting dynamic. Uh, it's, I do get reached, I get charged up by hanging out with people though. Yeah. And I think introverts get charged up by being alone. So uh -huh. it's very, I'm, I don't know if you could classify whatever I am. Okay, because I was going to say, like, if you, if you obviously, talking straight to a camera is, so I found out, it's not the easiest thing in no, the world. No, no. Okay. So, like, in your first videos, you kind of say, let's talk about, like, a subscriber update or something. You're kind of in your garage, you're in the middle of the frame. Yeah. You just kind of sat there. Yeah. Like, there's no, there's barely any of this. It's just yeah. like, okay, hello, I am BKXC. Today, we are going to do this. So, like... It's completely different now. Obviously, yeah. now you're doing live streams, yeah. you're doing all sorts. So, what what was it that really kind of brought you out of your shell in terms of being being an entertain? Let's say the entertainer. Yeah, side of it. it's like just reps. Content. It's just repetitions. And uh, I don't know. I feel like I've always kind of talked with my hands and kind of had stuff going on. But if you see it, if you see it differently, if that's yeah. how you see we should it. Go, we should go back yeah. and watch watch one. And it is I you know. I've, Maybe I'm taking Done it differently, some research, but yeah. it's like, I feel like definitely now when you talk to the camera, there's so much confidence. Yes. Did that, I mean, did that come because your subscribers went up? No, like it's all it, repetition. Or? It's all repetition and being critical and watching it back and hearing your own voice and hating your voice, you know, That's and then the worst. it's all <laughs> like, I've talked about this before, but I've had other YouTube channels before this. I had an audiobook review channel. I had the sprinkler uh, controller channel. Yeah. So I already had... 50, 100 videos of reps, of talking, of cuts, and, and doing all this stuff over and over and over again. And so my first video wasn't really my first video, mm. right? So I had that advantage. And mm. I suggest everyone to do as many videos as you possibly can, mm. because then you get over the hump, and you do it, and you do it, and you do it, and it's still friggin' weird talking to yourself in the airport with holding up the camera, but <laughs> yeah. you do what you gotta do. I mean, I know you've there's been a bunch of videos that you've made where it's like, okay, what? Um, you know, I sat at my desk and someone was taking by and I mean, it, it can't have been an overnight decision to go. No, no. You know, but it also can't have been a decision before you started filming the videos, right? It, it was a decision before I started filming the videos actually, which is kind of crazy. So I, I set myself up for this basically yeah. by reading self-help books by like by listening to podcasts that are talking about people building businesses mm. and the idea of success and all that stuff that kind of unwinds yourself and, and gets you thinking about success and motivation and how do people build these million dollar billion dollar businesses like who are they mm. and you start reading books about them and and seeing different principles and different you know guides and business books and I was absorbing all of that I was yeah. I was getting myself there and like thinking about my bullshit as me, like who I am. Why do I get mad when I do this? Why do I, you know, why, oh, why can't I have a relationship? You know, you start thinking about all these things, you go introspective and you go, so I was like building myself up very much, like mm -hmm. to get into this position to finally see. So the whole idea with the audiobook review channel and like the sprinkler controller channel, we're just like, hey, if you could be an authority on something, you could sell affiliate links. So that's kind of what the big tech YouTubers, I don't know if they still do that as much, but back in the day, it's like, okay, hey, I'm talking about this thing. There's a link in the description to Amazon. If you buy through it and they're getting millions of views, they're making, you know, millions of dollars a year, basically mm -hmm. by owning that niche. So I was like, okay, how about an online business? I bet I could do an online business. And then all of a sudden I set myself up for that. I love mountain biking. I always hated mountain bike videos. Mm -hmm. Then I saw Nate Hill's video and I was like, hey, yeah. it's YouTube, mountain biking. Yeah. And I already knew YouTube. I already knew 
makeup chicks and bodybuilders and Casey like Neistat that. or yeah. whoever, there's tons of people that were making a living in a niche because they owned it and mountain biking didn't exist for YouTube. I mean, Seth was there, probably about 45,000 subscribers when I first started, yeah. you know, not making a living on YouTube yet, but killing it. There's Nate Hills, but no one was being a friend. No one was being that YouTube personality, mm -hmm. the fishing guy that's probably making a million dollars a year <laughs> with yeah. a million subscribers that no one's ever friggin' heard of except for people in fishing. That guy, I could be that guy for mountain biking. Mm. So you were seven, you were seven years as the yeah like the news yeah. side yeah yep. seven years in the news side. Then how long at pots and pans? Maybe two. Okay, so 2013. Three, yeah, about maybe two or three. Yeah. yeah. But you'd ha you basically had two jobs since you left. Exactly. Probably. Exactly. So, I mean, that's quite a, if you saw that on paper, yeah. that's like quite a comfortable, like, hey, I've got my job, I'm just gonna go to my job and dedicate my time to my job. Like, to then start picking up self help books, like, what drove that moment? Because that's like almost the biggest step. Really, yeah, it is. Reading the book, like, actually reading the books, then obviously, second step, but and following through. But yeah. That initial step of going, hey, I actually, maybe I can be a better person. Yeah. Like, was there something that drove that specific moment? I think my thought has always been, and it's a very narcissistic thought, mm -hmm. is that there's all these small businesses, there's all these big businesses out there that are run by fucking idiots. <laughs> and hey, I need a plumber. And I call the plumber and he never fucking calls me back. Yeah. But somehow this plumber owns his own business and drives a nice car and has a nice house. What the fuck am I doing sitting at this desk, working for someone else, making someone else rich, yeah. when I'm pretty smart and I feel like I could be pretty interactive with people and, and do a good thing and, like, and kill this plumber guy if I started a plumbing business. Yeah. So that's always been in the back <laughs> of my stop? mind. Over, over and over and over again in my life. Yeah. These businesses, bike shops are the fucking worst. I hate bike shops, they yeah. are the worst except for the frame-up bikes yeah, and all the creek that I dig. Yeah. But I mean, just complete not businessmen at all. Just yeah. total, <laughs> I, I get so fired up about it that, yeah, that just most people that run businesses are just normal people like you and me. And they work really hard, ho hopefully, but it's like, I could do this. Yeah, yeah. And that's what it was. It was just the, I could probably do that better if I put my mind to it. Yeah, and find okay. something that I could yeah. really get excited about and mm -hmm. get into. That's cool. It's, it's quite interesting to have the drive, right? Because a lot of people, like, let's say you open a bike shop, like, you're into biking before, and then it's like, oh, I can open up a bike shop. But yours was more, I could do a thing. Yeah. I don't know what the thing is. Yes. So then you went to the, yes. I'm going to start reading. I guess you watched. I mean, was YouTube, Yeah. I guess, oh yeah, it would have been around in terms of like an information yes, source. Yes, of course. So that's how you were seeking it all out. I mean, did you speak to anyone? Did you speak to anyone that had done it? Like, had you spoke, spoken to someone that did have a successful business? No, I, not that I can think of, that not was no kind of mentors. It was just all, you know, Tim Ferriss podcasts, this, that, like all these books and different bits and pieces. Just, yeah, no real, only now that I've kind of been in it that I've actually met people that have done it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who, who have you met outside of uh, Bike World? Uh, ugh, nobody, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> so you met people that are yeah, the Bike, bike, world. bike yeah. world, okay. Yeah. Who would you like to meet? Apart from Casey Neistat, that's a too obvious a one. Yeah, even Casey Neistat, I don't know. Like I've said this before, it's like, I, I, it'd be nice to meet him, but what do I, hey, you, you inspired me, like all that stuff. Yeah. I, it's quite hard to be like, oh, like, so like worshiping. Yes, exactly. It's like, it's like I've got really... nothing to say except for every other friggin' person that comes up yeah. to you that has a YouTube channel yeah. and like, But you did Thanks, send man. him, you sent him a map. Yeah, yeah. But you did, so is that, yeah. is that the kind of, I'm gonna reach out like Yes, this. exactly, and just like kind of say, hey, thanks. Because yeah. he did really inspire me and there's so many motivational, ju oh, yeah. like little gems hidden inside his videos that were just very much a part of the drum beat of like, Go for it, go for it, go for it. Yeah. Was there one that really like spoke? There are, there's a couple and uh, it, it sucks because they're hidden inside these videos where the thumbnails like his wife pushing a stroller and I don't even remember what the title, <laughs> the title <laughs> oh, was. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, they're, they're, they're buried deep. So it's like, I'd have to go back and look through the archive and be like, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. No, I, I hear you on that. For me, yeah. for me it's the, um, how he breaks up his day. Yeah. Cause I would, I was just fast like, there is no way, either this guy is, the best video producer ever, 
and he can just slay these out in like an hour. But then he's like, oh, I spend like four or five hours editing. And you're like, what? <laughs> okay. And then like, I guess the yeah. reveal was the good thing for me. But to answer your question, I'm sure there's somebody out there. I just, nothing comes to mind. Nate Hills. I'd love to meet Nate Hills. Okay. I've never met Nate Hills. <laughs> and I One really day. want to shake his hand and say thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. So traveling. It's actually something me and you share. Yeah. We always like, it's, I don't obviously have as much of a, an extension, but if anyone messages me like on my Whistler videos, for example, where it's like, oh, I wish I could go to Whistler. I, like, my, I just always respond, what's, what's holding you back? Like, actually, why are you doing this? So, but I mean, we obviously know you're traveling now, but yeah. before all this, did you, did you travel? Yeah, yeah, I did travel. I've, uh, like, let's see, right between community college and university, I did like a 38 day backpacking trip to Europe and backpacking, not, you know, roughing it, just like hostel, Hustles, youth, yeah, youth hostel, yeah. youth hostel yeah. kind of thing, traveling around and ooh, 38 days is way too much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm good after Wait, about 10 days anywhere. That, do you know, there's, a, there's an English comedian that has a whole sketch about that exact thing. <laughs> but where, where did you go? 38 days. So I started in London made my way to Paris and uh, Cinque Terre in Italy. Yeah, what have you learned about being an, an American since then? Like how America fits into this it's the whole tapestry? It's super interesting because it's pretty obvious that we're like the juggernauts and that this whole travel industry exists because of Americans. And it's all, everyone's speaking English everywhere. Mm -hmm. I think it's because of Americans. Yeah. And either the the Brits invading literally yes. every country. Yes. I think it's I wanna say it's like we've invaded ninety-five countries or something. It's <laughs> insane. Yeah. But anyway. So it, that's what it seemed like to me, that it's like, geez, you could be and I haven't been to the most remote places on earth, but yeah. I've seen enough about the most remote places on earth and like, yes, we'll take American dollars and yes we speak English. And it's like, wow, Jesus, mm. like okay. Like that is an amazing thing that uh there's nowhere new to go. Everybody's been everywhere. Okay. Quote from, uh, was it the Truman Show? Yeah. That, that. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't, so it's more like, you know, as, as an English person, I've often been, like when I lived in France, I was like, oh God, I know. <laughs> like, was it that you were very self-conscious? Have, have you ever been like quite self-conscious about being kind of a, a foreigner when you go into these places? Or are you like, hey, do you know what? I really want to learn about all this culture. And like, what's your attitude when you get into a new place? So it's very interesting. The when I go travel, it's basically ride, 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 ride. And yeah, that's it. You know, yeah. there's no walking around. There's no doing anything, and you miss out on the culture stuff because it's work, work, work. It's go, go, go. On the Spain trips, like Basque MTB, I feel like we get a little bit more of that because we're going around, we're staying in these really cool places, and we get to interact, and we're ordering in Spanish, and the guides are helping us out, and you get that taste, like you get that taste of like, wow, this is me. This is mm -hmm. like cool being in a different place. I'm not so self-conscious of my Americanness, but I remember now a couple times on these trips where like I'm in a restaurant with some other people and you just hear this like loud American accent from across the room. Uh, yeah. And it's like, so like, ugh, <laughs> like just, ugh. Yeah, I'll have the beef and the, <laughs> like, ugh. It's just so like weird. It's so funny. Like just the, the loudness, the ugly American thing is definitely a, a true thing. Yeah, something, something that I've been told about my Englishness is uh, this one friend of mine has always called me a prude. <laughs> and Canadians seem, well, especially where I live in Scottish, like everyone's so, a lot of people are so outgoing. Yeah. And they have, they have this uh, women's only race. Yeah. It's called Hot on Your Heels. And it's very much about kind of female empowerment, but in a different way. So like various kind of uh, feed stations, there'll be naked men in aprons, like cooking bacon and stuff. Yeah. And when you go to the, when you go to the after party and you're a man, you have to get on the dance floor and take your shirt off, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to do this. And yeah. she's like, oh, you're such a prude. <laughs> anyway, it's slammed a bunch of drinks in. What perception, could be any perception, has changed since you've started your YouTube channel. Hmm. Like something you thought, like, things are like this, but actually, no, they're not. Huh. I think that the community is so cool. 
Like you always think, like, oh, YouTube comments, oh, YouTube comments, oh, <laughs> they're the worst <clears throat> and stuff. And like, it's, you know, I still get one crappy comment a day, but that's very, very much a drop in the bucket for the big scheme of things, of what's going on and how somehow I've been able to magnetize a lot of people that really like what I'm doing and are positive and this whole positive energy that actually allows me to make a living doing it is, I knew it was possible, but I thought it would just be like maybe 50-50 haters versus positive, mm -hmm. not 99.9 .9 positive and 0.1 haters. Yeah. I mean, there's all <laughs> there's forever the comment. Do you? I mean, you must get bored. Like forever the comment. What happened to the DVO vlog? <laughs> like, at, by by the by, just just for this, I have looked for the answer. Yeah. Of that, but was it? I think in one episode you said you just got to try. Yeah. Loads yeah, of yeah. Stuff. And I feel like I said it like 20 times. Like I'm like at the Atlanta airport building up my bike. It's like the first episode of Redemption 17. Yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah, I just want to try different stuff. And like these videos, like the Redemption 17, people have watched it a thousand times, but I kind of get now. You kind of have to repeat yourself over oh. and over. And that's why I kind of gave up on it. Cause it's like, I've said this like 20 times. I've answered a thousand comments like yeah. legitimately. And then it's like, you break, you break after a little while. Yeah, that, I, guess I that's am another just a man. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's another perception. Where, oh, I'll say this once. And yeah, it's really fine. yeah, it's a bad perception. Yeah, yeah. Because like, how many times must you have said, "Please subscribe to my <laughs> channel now"? Because it's like you've got to say it because you yeah. you can see how many new people are watching videos, yeah. how many that seen them, likely seen them before. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever, I've probably said it once or twice. Please subscribe, I don't really say it. No? No. Okay. Yeah. But okay, what about? Everybody I guess, does. I guess you're more like Patreon. Yeah, I, I always Patreon. mention Patreon. I try to mention it and there's, I definitely let it slip sometimes when I don't. Yeah. And uh, I think the funniest anecdote about Patreon is like, I feel like I say it so much. Like I have these trips called Chasing Epic where people come along on the trips. Like mm. two of the 12 guys didn't know what Patreon was. <laughs> It's mm. like, hey, what? And they signed up you specifically came on from to come video. ride yeah. on the trip, and it's like, it's so obviously I'm doing a shitty job of talking um, about what Patreon is. Okay. Did you ask them like why you have it? Like I just glossed over because I didn't want to make them feel stupid or anything. Like I've been like, tell me how I can do it better. Like, yeah, but they, if they don't even know what it is, then I have to do the whole. Oh, they have so, no idea what it is. Oh, so but so they just literally didn't go and look. Oh, what's Patreon? Yeah, yeah. Oh, or like, okay. what? Why is this like twenty second chunk in my videos? Like where I'm saying that this isn't possible without Patreon. <laughs> like, yeah. like, They're like, like, oh yeah, these Patreon guys these, are really yeah, doing exactly. That. Yeah, it's like <laughs> a, a spon bike company. They sponsored me, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you don't know, Patreon is where normal people sponsor me for like three bucks a month, and yeah. that's what actually makes this possible. YouTube ad money makes it possible. Oh. Selling T-shirts makes it possible, but really, Patreon is like. The, the nexus of the subscription service yeah. that people are so generous. I definitely think there, the, uh, there is one perception in everyone just it just feels that YouTube is like this huge money like tree and yeah. you can just go, oh yeah. can you, please please can I have some more money YouTube yeah. and it's it's like even you know I, we've talked about the comments that have come my way and it's like oh you know, he's made so much money out of this. But yeah, one of the perceptions YouTube. of other people is that like, and I see other people like PewDiePie talk about this, and it's like, you know, younger people are just going, oh, I'm just gonna start this YouTube channel and I'll be a millionaire and, yeah. oh, life's so easy. But yeah, it's just like that thing with Patreon, it's like, you know, it, it requires so not many so many video views probably twice as many video views because ads aren't served on every yeah. video so like that patreon support is so so important yeah it's like i i should do the math sometimes but people will ask me time to time like oh if i watch this video like 10 times like a dollar a no month idea. is like yeah. so worth so much more mm. than you watching the video a thousand times. Like yeah. it's just not gonna. Add well, it up. is. It's. I think you'd have to watch uh, three. It's probably well. I guess three thousand <laughs> for videos? a dollar. I think it's three thousand like watches would be a, <laughs> not even a dollar. There you go. Just a little bit of insight there. So I mean, and no one has the time. No, exactly. it's like, yeah, and I hear people say yeah. like, oh, I let your video yeah. run all the way. It's like, it's okay, man. It's, it's like, all good. Great. Yeah, I appreciate the watch time. Definitely. Like, the watch time yeah. is most valuable. Yeah. But yeah, okay, that's, that's a good one. Now, what about um, the highest high and the lowest low? Huh. The 
highest high and the lowest low. The highest highs are always when I get through a trip without injuring myself. Okay. And it's like, boom, we're over, it's done. I've got a shitload of videos to go edit now and just so much fun. But trying to pinpoint one high high, you know, getting the 100,000 subscriber play button is pretty neat. It was a pretty good recognition. Yeah. You know, crossing a thousand patrons on Patreon is very much more concrete. Like, mm. but chicken and egg. It, well, it, no, just but, which one definitely fed me. Yeah. I, yeah. I've said this many times and it, it denigrates the whole idea of the subscriber number, but like, the subscriber number doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> like it's mm. everything we all measure our, each other by, yeah. but it means absolutely nothing. Like there's guys yeah. that have been on YouTube for 20 years, so they've got a million subscribers. Like it's not anything. Like action is everything. Action mm. is Patreon. Action is buying a shirt. Action is showing up on a Patreon ride. Like action is action and subscribing is yeah. 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 I hear you. Yeah. Tell you what, pass me that one. Yeah. What do you wish you could change about the mountain bike my mountain biking public and their relationship with the sport. Oh, uh, okay. There's many, many things. There's many <laughs> ideas that I have of just being more involved and like that trails don't build themselves. And okay. that the whole apparatus, everything we do is riding these trails and nobody really knows the history or who built it or what it is. It's just here, I just show up. Mm. And most of the time you don't have to pay for it. You just go out and do yeah. it. And actually galvanizing people to understand that we need to organize as a user group and that when we actually come together, pol political stuff happens when you get a bunch of people together. And it's something I want to ease into without being like a okay. total nutcase in, on my YouTube videos being like, ah, organize or die. Yeah. But that's probably what my video is going to be called when I start talking organize about it. Organize or die. <laughs> yeah, I see. Because, I mean, people will go out and spend 10 grand on a man bike. But if you ask that, hey, put twenty dollars into this jail box. Yeah, they're like, why? Yeah, there's a definitely <laughs> yeah. a, a, a backwards perception that those trails are just there, and yeah. it's like, who does it? But that is also the mountain bike club's burden to tell their story and to know mm -hmm. that, like, hey, we all want to ride more stuff. We all want to ride harder stuff. We all want to want to ride badass stuff, and that mm -hmm. doesn't happen unless you look at the examples of all the other places that have done it, like Squamish and mm. Whistler and Pemberton and, and Seattle is doing really good work. And how can we galvanize people to get together, to stick together and mm. make it happen? I, it's gotta be consequences, is not it? If there's a consequence of anything, someone will change their behavior. Yeah. Like that's your one. Yeah. So like, for example, today, when we went to Rockville, um, you know, we rock, we rocked up, <laughs> and there was a thing. Turnstile, it's like gotta pay. I, it's I like three, three bucks. Three bucks to get it. Thank you, bro. Uh, and like bike park Wales, you rock up. Six pounds to get and ride, and you're like, oh okay. But if you rock up to anywhere else, like even Squamish, I mean, we pay a yearly membership that goes towards it um, as as members and locals. Um, but it's again, it's kind of like unless it's like. You can't do this unless yep. it's this. Yep. But then that would obviously just put a big barrier in the sport. So, ah, oh, like I hear what you're saying. Like yeah. I think it's a great, it's a great thing to change for sure. And I think the, I think it's okay for people to come. And one of the things I always think about is like, hey, I'm going to all these trails and just riding these trails, hopping on and going and showing it off. But I think it's a good thing. It's almost like a trade. Hey, when you come mm. out, you can ride my trails. Come out, do it for free, and yeah. come ride. When I go to yours, I'll show them off and do yours. And yeah. as long as we're all involved and all kind of getting the scene going. And mm. Jeff Kendall Weed is big into this advocacy thing, and he talks about how the mountain biking sport is still in its infancy. And I love that idea. Oh there's yeah, so much more to go. Because mm. no one is. I don't. I feel like there's very few true fans of mountain biking. Like you know, people like when I when I did Sea Otter a couple of years ago and like racing it. All the conversations in the queue were, hey, look at my uh, Ibis carbon wheels on my Santa Cruz. Like, and that, that was an actual conversation. And I was like, hey, where'd you go mountain biking? And he's like, oh, just around my place. And I think he lived in the Rockies somewhere. And I'm like, have you, I was like yeah, have you ever thought about going to Whistler? And he's like, oh, no, I couldn't, I couldn't get there. Right. It's like, why? And I'm pretty sure he must have said because, you know, it costs a lot of money. Like, oh, what's this? Yes. And oh, it drives it drives me crazy. Yeah. So I think if people started 
you know, going, hey, if you want to do this, like, there's the group. And then from that, they'll be like, oh, like, all the other stuff, like, interested in, you know, maybe even the racing or yeah. stuff like that. But it's, um, it's obviously not as important as, like, having this mass, mass yeah. effect to, yeah. to make change. And, and like I say all the time, getting people to take action, mm. to, like, actually go out to a trail date or show up at a meeting that's going to sway whether or not mountain biking trails get built in a new park. Like, that's people taking action, and 1% of people maybe take action. Mm -hmm. They can talk a lot of talk, they can do a lot of things, but they'd rather be home doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. Watching. <laughs> <laughs> that would be too easy. Have you ever had any negativity from more accomplished riders out on the trail? Out on the trail? Like, actually, in face to face. Face to face, yeah. Not just keep No, no. I can't think of any. Because that's the thing, when you get face to face with people, all of a sudden the barriers break down. Oh, yeah. Like you're actually a human being and there's no way that you're going to be like, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. So in real life, no. But there is a bro mentality for sure that just certain mountain bikers and especially higher level mountain bikers because you kind of have to, oh, big you kinda have to yeah. be that person because yeah. you don't care about TV and movies. You care about your bike and you care about racing and there's certain things that fall off. You. You, when you're so laser focused and you're so mm. good at what you do. Yeah. Oh yeah, like there's definitely an, uh, an eliteness. Yeah. Like, and some people actually like it. Some people like that, you know, I've grinded out and I've got so good. Yeah, and of course. I can, I can have this, but I do, I do feel like that's the, that's almost the worst thing. And it's probably in badminton players and volleyball players and football oh players. God. They're all probably the same thing. Ba badminton scene is terrible. Yeah. Oh god, you can't even walk into a badminton bar without being judged. <laughs> I get it all the time. Like p pianists, cellists, like anyone that's at the top of their game, I think has. What? Who? I think any. Oh, pi pianist. pianist <laughs> cellist, like... pianist. <laughs> Come on, I'm trying to make a point here. Okay. That okay. those people are. they. Pieces of them being a normal person fall off because they started when they were five years old and they've been coached and prodded and forced to become yeah. something that their parents really liked them, wanted yeah. them to be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. You have I've done a couple of videos where you go and race. Yeah. Now, one of the things that's, that blows me away is that you enter the pro category. <laughs> but, like, I'm not a bad rider at all by any means. But, geez, the pro category. Like that it like I've, before you entered these enduro races. Had you done any other enduro races? No, no, no. So that's it. Like yeah. you just I like boom straight to the top. Now the question is, boom straight into the hardest thing. Like, are you just that competitive? No, that it's just compared to these I, guys. How, how could I, as a person that professionally mountain bikes, professionally entertains mountain yeah. biking? beat someone in like the sport category like that's not right i have all the time in the world you would think the, the person i beat would think to, to mountain bike there's no yeah. i can't i can't be at a lower class i just I, I have to embarrass myself in pro because it's not it's it just does not feel right whatsoever to like actually be at my level and be like haha i won and, okay and it's like yeah you won you have all the time in the world you could train you could eat you could you do all this and like yeah great so no sour grapes I'm freaking going pro all the way, finish so, last every so time. That's that's literally it. It's mm -hmm. just because you and taking someone else's spot that like has a job and has kids and like tries their friggin' best when oh I'm I'm living the dream. I obviously I should <laughs> yeah. be the fastest person in the world. Wow. Okay. That's well I didn't I didn't expect that. I was uh, gonna be like, oh yeah, I'm just really competitive and just gonna be in the best class. Yeah. Wow, well, okay. What are your guilty pleasures? Rick and Morty. That's not a guilty pleasure. That's like mainstream. I, <laughs> that is a mainstream like enjoyment factor. But when I'm not working, that's a guilty pleasure. I think. What do you mm. like? You you mean like quirky things? Well, I would guilty, say guilty pleasure must mean something else. I, I'm gonna say that a guilty pleasure of mine is sometimes I just really enjoy watching a really long Markiplier let's play. <laughs> I don't I don't play computer games. Yeah. I will. I will never, I don't even have games on my phone, yeah. but man, when he gets into like a, a story game, yeah, 12 parts, 40 <laughs> minutes each, just go, please, just go. this yeah. is like a crazy one, Yeah. so that, and that's not something I would like, I wouldn't like 
go to my girlfriend and be like, hey, by the way, I'm gonna watch like two hours okay, of this Okay, okay, guilty ple- Okay, because you, you feel guilty about it because the other people in your life are like, oh, this is so stupid. Because they like, that's so stupid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So I've played a little bit of Fortnite okay. you know, over the past few months. I kind of comes and goes. When I actually have a little time, I'll play with my brother online and that kind of stuff. And okay. everything's guilty for me because I'm trying to work all the time and trying to get stuff done. And oh, if, I, if I'm not editing, there's people on Patreon, there's people on YouTube waiting for a new video. Where's the new videos? Yeah. That's always in the back of my mind. Yeah. But you must have got it down to a bit of a fine art. So you can, because you, you like, however much you are, like you will at some point yeah, you know, the ca the candle only has so yeah, much Yeah, for it. sure, for sure. So there is a balance, but uh, it's always there. It's always there. How, how often do you watch your first ever videos? Oh, not that often, but only because I kind of, like it's almost kind of memorized or like mm -hmm. I've seen them enough kind of yeah. thing. I'm the kind of person that like, I'll only watch a movie once, even if it's like my favorite movie, like maybe okay. like after five years maybe, or 10 years, I'll watch that movie again. Yeah. Like I feel like once I sit down and I'm watching it again, it's like, yeah, I know how this goes. Like I, it, it's all there. There's no, like, it's fun, it's goofy, yeah. and I do enjoy it, but it's not something I do a lot. Okay. Is there one that you like, I've got to ask, like, is there one that you go, oh, why I think all of them are kind of embarrassing. Yeah. Like just if you watch it, it's like the, it, the gimbal's shaky and it's like, man, people watch this and like, <laughs> yeah. this has 47,000 views and it's like kind of <laughs> shitty, like, but yeah. it, the positivity from the community is like, kept me going and you know, I'm like, hey, I'm still doing this, still doing this. I'm, and I, you know, and I think the videos have only gotten better and better, which is weird because there's not that much to get better somehow, but it is better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've spent more hours doing yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So probably working towards you. Exactly. 10,000 10, hours. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't, it's, again, it's just like, you know, you'll go to, to anyone's first videos. Yeah. And you'll be like, wow. <laughs> it's <laughs> you great. Hit, you hit publish on that? It's my favorite part about YouTube. Yeah. Or for people who are being like genuine on YouTube. There's plenty of YouTubers like PewDiePie's first 50 videos that you can't find them. Like it's, he's uh, embarrassed by them, he has them hidden. I don't think, he, mm, I still think he has the one way he's like, I have 100 subscribers, can't believe it. Yeah. But there, and he, but there's plenty that he's he hiding. Always, he always goes back and and talk, actually lately, he even goes back and goes, oh my God, look, look at this idiot. Yeah. So I think he always does it. Yeah, but there's sure. some, Thing where he made those videos private or deleted them or something. Mm -hmm. When I love when you can go back to Marquis Brownlee, very first video, oh, yeah. him getting his laptop and talking about the features. He's 13 years old, yeah. and like just to watch that journey is like the coolest thing about YouTube is yeah. that it's all there. You can go back to the first video and watch all those videos, oh, yeah. and, and that even his videos, there's some that only have only have 12,000 views. Yeah, and it's like wow, who, nobody's even seen this thing. And yeah. It's like a piece. Of history. Yeah. I did, uh, after we went to Road Crockett Hills, I went, there's one that you have. It's yeah, like yeah. 2,900. Mm-hmm. And I was just yeah. like, this is great. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just you going out and you, I guess you had like a mixture of gimbal and then you had some third person stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. did you just figure third person? It's a, it is a ball like doing like, yeah, setting up the just, tripod, it makes great, back up. makes great thumbnails. That was kind of the thing. Is oh, okay. It's the best thumbnail because some, someone's writing in it. And uh, my, you know, my thing about third person shots is anything that turns it into a video shoot versus a ride mm. is just worthless because I have a thousand videos that are just me and the gimbal and it's great. Mm -hmm. So nobody, there are people that are like, hey man, drone shot, hey, do this, do that. It's like, yeah. you have no idea. Like, <laughs> oh yeah! Start your channel. Go ride with three other people and have you be the person slowing them down and stuff. I hate being the person slowing everyone down. So like, even with my gimbal and stuff, I'm rarely the one faffing about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you've just been, you've got it down to a yeah, final yeah. Arm and, like, how? What specific things have you done that you think have improved your videos? Oh, okay. Hmm. Everything, everything from top to bottom. Always thinking about what I could say, how it could be funny, how it could be entertaining. And that, a lot of that is spontaneous, but I feel like just doing reps, all mm -hmm. of a sudden like more funny, interesting stuff comes out. Yeah. Thinking about the video as a story, which is, you know, most everything is just go out and ride and hope it's a good ride. Yeah. But like thinking about it as a story of like, okay, we're doing this, like, oh, I heard about this part coming up. Uh, am I gonna mm -hmm. be able to do it? And kind of that, that whole idea of, 
just laying laying the groundwork kind of thing, which I don't even really do that great. Mm -hmm. The audio and the video, always trying to get better, always trying to tweak different things, yeah. and my color correction and stuff, the colors, and always not settling for less. There's mm -hmm. certain times where I'll, I'll edit a video and I'll kind of take my eyes off of it and I come back to it and it's like, this is purple. Why didn't I see that it was purple? <laughs> like there's a lot of my videos that were purple, like where oh, it's yeah? like the auto white balance was just messed up. So it's like, I'll come back, I'm like, oh, okay, I gotta go through every single frame now and every single clip and just change the colors and try to get the colors right. And mm -hmm. stuff that people probably wouldn't even notice, you know, cause once you sit down and your eyes watch and you kind of get into it, but yeah, always trying to get better. And especially my writing, I'm always trying to get my writing better. Oh, I think you've, that's, you've got so much better since that. That's a huge part of it because yeah. really this whole thing, this whole YouTube channel is a epic story. It's a 20 year story. Yeah. From going back to my first video of me riding with my thumbs over the bars, me quitting my job. Well, hold on. Running with thumbs over the bars yeah. is fine. Yeah, oh yeah, it's, <laughs> totally, it's totally great. We talked at length about that today. Yeah. Shut, silence those haters. Yeah. So, yeah okay. On the downhills, I, I Oh, on the downhills. Oh yeah, you're a madman. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. But over the top. That's more, more people were concerned about the downhills. But that's what this is, and that's why it's so friggin' cool that mm. people can be a part of it. Yeah. And this thing it's just moving along what am i going to do next how like oh what's going to happen in five years you know mm -hmm. how is this going to evolve and people have been here from the start and this is still the start right now yeah. okay yeah what's in terms of in terms of sacrifices oh okay like what do you because obviously you know the the bkxc brand that's yeah. not part of the youtube channel it's part of the bkxc okay. brand is priority number one yeah so things must have fallen by the wayside yeah, kind of, sort of. I, I don't know. I feel like I lived kind of the same friggin' life I always did. And I try to hook up with my friends. They're busy too. Mm -hmm. So it's like those relationships are kind of like, hey, you text people and like, oh, okay, I'm, yeah, you got a birthday party, boom. I shoot down, I'm still there as much as I would. I still hang out with my brother and his wife and my mom and dad, and my family. We just had Father's Day over the bridge. Mm -hmm. Most of my family was there and, you know, aunts and uncles, grandpa. And uh, the whole love life thing has always been a thing. No matter if I have a job or if I'm doing yeah. this thing, it's always a problem. It always will be a problem. Is, and... it, a, is it a problem though? Because people people are fascinated by yeah. like, oh, is he gay? Oh, yeah. why does he have a girlfriend? <laughs> exactly. Sounds like, you know, it's the yeah. 1950s or yeah. something where people yeah. are like, wow, well, he should be married. He's, yeah. God, he's 36 yeah. years old. Like, but yeah. it's, it's always been a thing for as long as I've lived, so it is what it is. There's no, no different if I was working at McDonald's yeah. and friggin' couldn't find anyone that I actually liked. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just classic. It's me. People just wanting to know why this. Yeah. Is, it, it actually fascinates me. That yeah. That particular subject. It's like, this is a mountain bike channel. Why, why didn't you ever go, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it makes sense because it's crazy. my life, right? And people are interested in my life and I'm always interested like, that guy's married, huh? He found someone. That's yeah. good for him. Yeah, yeah. I'll keep looking. Okay. So, let's finish with the closing. All right. How much longer is this gig gonna go? That's a good question, man. I hope that I will keep making videos on this channel mm. forever, basically. Okay. That doesn't mean three videos a week. Right. That okay. means that like, you know, in 30 years from now, 40 years from now. It'll be 76 years exactly. old. Exactly. Okay. Strap on the gimbal, switch to e go for a ride, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. whatever it is at that yeah. time that like, even if it's once every six months, mm. oh shit, Brian's got a new video. Yeah, yeah. And there will be something of me riding my bike and riding the best trails in the world in some form, whether, and hopefully more than once every six months. But by that time, Hopefully, I will have diversified my portfolio and created something and been a mm. part of something and found opportunities to buy my Corvette Z06. <laughs> oh, the dream. That's it. Okay, cool. On that note, it's been a great chat. Awesome. Thank thanks, Brian. Jesus. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go and do some bicep curls. Okay, on that note, thanks, punters. This has been a very long video. I might not edit it that much. Good. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching.